welcome to our recorded online Nine Lessons and Carols. The service of Nine Lessons and Carols was first drawn up by Edward Benson when he was Bishop of Truro for use in his cathedral there, which was being built at the time, and was later simplified and adapted for use in the chapel of King's College, Cambridge, in 1918 by the then Dean, Eric Miller White, who wrote the bidding prayer, which Sarah will say in a moment. Before we start, though, this special service, I must thank Nigel for all the work that he has done in supporting the choir over this pandemic lockdown. Nigel, your work is very much appreciated by all of the choir members, and especially by myself, for your care that you have shown to them. I must also thank David for arranging to the recording of this service. All the other services that we have so far done within the benefits have been solely reliant upon Sarah and I, and so it is a real blessing that somebody else has a responsibility for this service, so thank you also for Silk Purse for recording it. And finally, we need to thank Roger for stepping in and playing the organ for us, as Malcolm has had once more to shield during this pandemic. Thank you, Roger. Today's service is different, not only in that it is recorded, but because it is recorded, this has also enabled us to use all our churches to do recordings in. We've also taken the opportunity to use Shiplake Primary School and Shiplake College to record two other carols. And we thank them for contributing to this real community effort. This is a real first for us. And thanks go to all the schools and the choirs for all the work that they have done. And we hope and pray that you enjoy this service. Beloved in Christ, be it this Christmas tide our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God. From the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially in this benefice and in the Diocese of Oxford. And because of this, all things would rejoice his heart. Let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick, and them that mourn, the lonely, and the unloved, the aged, and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore. And in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom, in the Lord Jesus, we are forever one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself hath taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life. And unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of Angels bring us all. Amen. The first lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15 and 17 to 19. 
They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. God promises to faithful Abraham that in his seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this 
and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore, and your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. The third lesson is taken from Isaiah. The prophet foretells the coming of the Savior. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the name of the Lord.
peace that Christ shall bring is foreshown. A shoot shall come out of the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, and the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Angel Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words 
and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, <clears throat> and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son 
and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. The shepherds go to the manger. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace amongst those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Oh, 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 oh,
Wise men are led by the star to Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And, calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord.
St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to be the children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May he who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly bestow upon you the fullness of inward peace and goodwill and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you all this Christmas time and remain with you for all eternity. Amen. <laughs>